House. She's going to talk about trading on the side of power money. She's also one of our sponsors this month. We really appreciate our sponsors. They make it possible for a couple of different things to happen in the backgrounds, as well as them coming and be, being presenting their um, expertise for us. So let me just tell you a little bit about her, and then I will have her take it away. She's the founder and the owner of the Stock Swoosh. It's an international education company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. She created the method that she teaches. It's unique to the Stock Swoosh LLC. And the method is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. So this is a really different spin. And I think you're going to gain a lot from this. Now, let me just see. I know you're here, Melissa. Can you can you unmute yourself and let me know if um, we're good to go? There you can go. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. All right. I know that you like to see things on the fly. So I'm going to make you the presenter and then I'm going to make you the organizer and it's going to knock your mic out for about three seconds. Okay. So there's presenter. You should be able to present your screen and now it's going to knock your mic out. Okay. Can there you, you go. Can you see and can you hear me? Yes. Learn how to trade gaps. Wonderful. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here today. Uh, today I'm in New York City. Of course, it's 9-11. Sad day uh, for all Americans, I think. Oh, man, A lot yeah. going on today here in New York City. And just want to take the time to uh, remember all the people um, Thank you. that lost their lives in 9-11. Uh, it was tragic. It's, it's interesting. I, I can't even believe that it was 20, 23 years ago. I just, uh, it's shocking how time flies. Um, Were you in New York that day? No, I wasn't. But I will tell you an interesting story since you asked uh, before we start because it is 9-11. I actually was in Sarasota, Florida where George Bush was. Can you believe that? And my I was in Sarasota, Florida. It really? Were you? Yeah. So I, I worked for I worked for um, a headhunter, uh -huh. and they worked with a ton of actuaries who were in both of those buildings. Oh so it was goodness. really a total shock. In New and, York, I they mean, were. You mean they were in New York? Uh, the company. Okay, yeah. There were we were in Sarasota, but the actuaries were in the actual buildings that got bombed, oh like that got that's taken terrible. down. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, I, so luckily I wasn't in New York, but, um, but I will tell you that this is, I mean, there's a backstory to this. So early 2001, I actually auditioned. I thought I wanted to uh, come to New York before I, before I even got here. And I auditioned in Juilliard to become an actress and go to Juilliard, which is one of the top acting schools. I did not get accepted. It was an amazing experience. Oh. That was April of 2001. But if I had, I would have been in New York. So life takes a really oh, wow. different an interesting turn. That was a great experience for me though. There was like 1200 people that auditioned that day and they chose eight people. Um, so I did audition wow. in New York, which was really, really a great experience, but then I didn't get in. Otherwise I would have been in New York. So anyways, then I moved to Sarasota and I was there. And the night before on September 10th, my family was with me and we went to see uh, Air Force One. Uh, because Sarasota is a small airport, and we yeah. went and we saw Air Force One on the tarmac, and we saw it right there, and and we walked right up, and we got to see it, and then and then all of this happened. So luckily, you know, my family, everyone, no one was in New York at the time, but it was obviously tragic, and it's just like hard to think back 23 years ago how much life has changed. You know what I mean? Now it's just second yeah. nature when you go to. You know, when you go to the airports here at LaGuardia, JFK, and all, you, I mean, you have to go to the airport three, four hours ahead of time to go through all the checkpoints. It's just, life has changed so much now since then. And um, when you think about what's even happening now, you know, it's concerning in the world. So, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, how interesting. You were in Sarasota, too. Well, yeah, beautiful place. I will Born say and that. raised there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll let you take it away. I'm going to mute myself now and let you take it wonderful. away. Wonderful. Well, good to hear everyone's stories and and glad that everyone that's here is safe. And so we're going to talk about uh, how to trade gaps. That is what we're going to talk about today. And I do appear on television. I'm not on TV today. If I was on TV today, I probably would talk about how the market sold off today and was down today after the debate last night. Um, we shorted today, had a, had a bunch of nice trades today. And we're going to talk about what I do specifically with gaps and shorting 
If you're interested in more information, you can email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAT. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So I put in here the stats. I don't have today's trade. We shorted BA today. I put in here the stats, though, for the day trades, year to date, from January up till uh, the 10th. <clears throat> and again, we did BA today. That was a short at work. You can look at the chart. And I risk an average of $3,000 per trade in my day trades, okay? <clears throat> now, a day trade, when I say day trade, I mean that's a trade on margin, okay? So you would take the trade and you would have to have a margin account to do it. I do run a live trading room where I call the trades live. I also trade options. I'm risking much more in my options. Why? I want to take bigger positions. I want to hold them longer and for overnight. So I am risking an average of $8,000, a little bit more in some trades in my options trades. And again, very, very good year for us here at the Stock Swoosh for trading. So, so far year to date with the room and the newsletter, we're up over $3 million for the year. Again, I have the losses and the wins in there because some trades do lose. You need to know that when you're looking at a trade, every time there's a possibility that the trade could lose. When I started out trading, I wanted to try to find a way to win, I'm, and, and now I do, and I'm very good at making money, but I don't have a 100% win, win ratio. My win ratio varies on any given week, on any given month, between probably about 70 and 75% for both the room and the newsletter. So you have to account for the fact that some trades are not gonna work out. I think the problem for many people, when they decide that they wanna trade, they assume that everything's gonna work, then they start trading, then they start losing, then they feel like they're gonna lose all the time, and then they get into this very negative mindset. You know, it, it's best to be somewhere in the middle, not, not unrealistic is what I should say. Look at every trade that you're trying to take calculated risk. It's not gambling. You're going into the trade and you're saying there's a possibility this trade could lose, but I don't think it's going to lose. So I'm going to take it, but you still have to size yourself. And that's where the calculated risk comes into play. And again, we're going to talk about that more today as well. Um, and Sherry, I forget, do I have an hour or 45 minutes? to talk. I'm just want to make sure you have an hour, okay. 60 minutes for sure. Okay, great. So anyways, as I was saying, the debate was last night and the US election is I think it's 54 days away from today. So yeah, we we had the debate last night, but the election is almost two months away. It's it's just so long away. A million things could happen between now and that a million things have already happened. Uh, six months ago, Biden was the Democratic nominee. So just so many things are changing all the time. And all of these things affect the market. Again, like I said earlier, the market sold off today. I specifically focus on shorting. It doesn't mean that I don't go long. I do go long. We actually went long Oracle yesterday, but I prefer to short. So if you're somebody that prefers to go long, you're going to have a problem on days like today or really any time in the next four months if the volatility continues in the market where you only know how to go long. You're buying the dips. You're losing money. It's not working. I know the market's been bullish for the first eight and a half months of the year, but the fact is People may have, may have all the gains for the first beginning part of 2024, eight months of gains, and give it all back in the last part of the four months of the year. Why? Because if the market's volatile or falls, people are not going to know how to trade it unless they know how to short. And you also can't short everything. Okay, so again, you know, we did BA today. We did market puts, but you can't short everything, you know, and just like you can't go long everything, okay? And again, I'm looking here on the side. If you have questions, put it in the chat and I will see them as we go along, just FYI. Um, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, okay, there's volatility. Volatility is good if you know how to trade it. It should not be something that is scary to you. And again, if it is, then you're not probably not an active trader. Your personality may be better, better suited to be a long-term investor or swing trader. So what I do, Again, all the results that I showed you is active trading. We're doing weekly options, okay? We're doing active day trades. We're in and out in a couple of minutes. That's it. I say chunking it out, but that, that is really what we're doing, okay? We're in and out. We take the trade, get the move, book it. Take the trade, get the move, book it. And again, if you know how to trade, you can make a lot of money doing that. So how do you want to live in trading? Number one, you need a winning strategy. We're going to talk a little about mine today. If you decide you're interested, you can reach out to me to learn in my class how I do it, and then you can do it yourself. Number two, you need to support a mentor. I think this is extremely important. When I was starting and when I was starting out, I didn't have people to ask questions to or someone to ask questions to. 
I think it really makes a difference that you can email me, pick up a phone, call me. Definitely, definitely important because you can come back to me even after the class and say, I don't get this. What did you mean? Why did you do BA? Or how did you know the market would fall? And I will answer those questions for you, you know, and give you the support that you need. The other thing is, I think you need to become an expert in one thing. So I specifically have become an expert in gaps, which we're gonna go over today, but really shorting. So again, the benefit of shorting is what? The benefit of shorting is you're shorting to panic. You're shorting to selling. You're shorting to panic that comes into a stock. What happened today in the market? Market sold off. We had data this morning. You could say, well, we fell because of this thing, because of that thing, because of the data, because of Fed has a meeting next week, because of the debate last night, whatever. It doesn't really matter why, okay? If that helps you get conviction, take the trade, that's fine. But the fact is that when panic comes into a stock of the market, it's going to sell off, okay? And then you want to be able to make money shorting. If a stock is at $5 and drops down to $4, that's a dollar move. If you have 1,000 shares and you short it, you can make $1,000. Okay, it's really that simple. And the concept of shorting is something that I think people just don't want to take the time to learn, but it, but it is a great concept when you think about it and a great way to make money. But like I said, you have to take calculated risk, not only risk for risk sake. I think when people start trading, and then again, I was, I was in this camp too when I started, you look at something and you say, oh my gosh, there's so much money in the market. You can make so much money trading. Yes, that's true. But a lot of people lose. Why? They don't know what to do. So you can't take risk for risk sake. You can't take a trade for a wing and a hope and a prayer. This is not like, you know, again, winning a pot of gold or the lottery or something like that. You have to look at it as a business. Your dreams of becoming successful, your dreams about making a lot of money trade, and all of those dreams can come true if you learn what to do. It's step by step. Now, again, depending how much money you have to risk per trade will depend how much you make on a trade, but you will be profitable if you have more winners than losers. And the only way to do that is what? You have to have a successful strategy that has more winners than losers and something that you can follow every single day, okay? It's a, it's a pathway that you would follow daily. Any questions here as I'm talking? Let's look quickly. What's everyone doing? Okay, uh, what was I saying? Yes, okay, so you need a structure. You need a system, okay? So what is my system? My system looks at a gap. So on every single day, including the market, everything gaps. What is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. I use a 26-point checklist to determine the rating of that gap and then I determine if it's going to follow through in the direction of the gap or not based on the checklist of the rating. I'm looking for 20 points of the 26. So I don't need a perfect score. If I rate a gap and it gets 21 points and it's a bearish gap, I will short it, vice versa for the longs. Okay, yesterday, like I said, we went long Oracle. So it is about the consistency when I take a trade and I prep in the morning, and I get ready to go, and I figure out what I wanna do, I look at it in the morning, I process everything in the pre-market, and then, of course, I make a decision based on what I wanna do and based on the rating system, okay? So again, that's what I do every single day. It's the consistency that I apply to my method and my trading allows me to have the consistent results. Again, if you're all over the place, you're like buying the dip or, doing this or shorting whatever or buying support it's or trying to follow the market you know a lot of people don't think the market was going to fall today we were up we were actually up at one point this morning so again you have to look specifically for a set uh system strategy structure for me it's the points okay it, i go in and i rate it and that's what tells me and this is what you would learn in the class for me but anyways, the whole point of, you know, trading is obviously to make money. Like I said, everybody has this dream. They have this goal. They have this idea. But if they don't have a focus, they can't do it. And for me, it's really that I focus on gaps. And I also focus on looking for stocks that are being controlled by institutional money. And how do I determine that? Again, I rate the gap. So what is a gap? Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some people, some gaps are better than others. Uh, some gaps are not made by institutional money. 
but some are, and those are the ones I'm looking for. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. BA is a good example of that. BA is a, is a gap made with institutional money, okay? Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow in your direction to pay you, okay? Any questions here? Seeing a couple people sign in. Okay, here's a chart of the SPY. <clears throat> so I did clip this here uh, right before I came in. So we were talking about the market, which sold off today. Okay, so this is the SPY. Actually, let's go back. Let's go back to last Friday. Okay, we did puts in the market last week. Last Friday, the market had a big bar, a big fat red bar, a big sell off here. Okay, nice big fat one. And again, you could have shorted this as a day trade. You could have done puts. We did puts. Again, today, you could have bought puts in the market or you could have shorted the market as a day trade, okay? So this is a red bar in the market and it also was a gap down, same thing here. And again, it's very, very interesting because you know a lot of people have been so bullish for this market for so, so long, but all of a sudden, now what? Institutional money is not buying the market. How do I know we've been selling off, okay? like. Again, people want to buy the dip and they want to go long into support. Well, you know, you would be getting killed if you did that this morning. So becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis is required. What does this mean? It means reading price action in the charts. So comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. So I'm reading the footprints of institutional money in the market. And again, I'm leaning on the short side, but you can do the same thing with the long side. Like I said, we went long Oracle. That got bought, okay? Now let's talk about doing options. So I have an options newsletter. Here is what the newsletter looks like, okay? You get it to your email if you sign up for the newsletter. Symbol strike expiration date, tight was a put. We did the NVIDIA puts last, expired last week. This was really a nice call. $1.70 was, was so cheap for NVIDIA, okay? I called the puts in this, and again, 268% uh, return on investment. You could have made it even more, and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. It fell into the last day, which was the sixth. I did not hold it the last day. You could have sold it at 625. So for an advanced trader risk, you could have made 22,750. For a beginner of an average risk of 1190 or seven contracts you could have taken, you could have made 31.85. Okay, so let's look at the chart. So I call this trade on Tuesday. Here, see it? So this is NVIDIA. <clears throat> so NVIDIA closed here, gap down. What is a gap? The gap is the difference in the close and the open. So NVIDIA closed at one price at four o'clock and opened at a second different price down on the morning. This was the day after the Labor Day. Here, it's off the planet. So I called the 110 puts and I called them early. And you could have got in and out here. You could have got in and out here. But if you held it the last day, which I did not do, it almost got to 100. So this would have been worth, I don't know if it would have been worth double here, what I made, but it would have been worth a lot more. It's completely insane. And again, one of the reasons why people love to do options is because you can make a lot of money with a small account. You could have risked, again, in this trade, $170 and made well over 200%. So even with a small account, it is possible to trade options. We also did snow. Snow was another good one. This was a put. We did this back. We did the 120 snows. Price was 350. Again, we shorted this two on margin. We did a day trade at snow, but you can also buy put. So we buy the put and then we sell it to exit it. So if you bought one, you would have paid 350. Four was 1400. Nice trade. 100% investment. What happened? 822. Here was the snow. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. She could have got in and out of the snow. Boom, done. Fell all the way down, broke 115. Again, a put is a short. Okay, it's a short. So we shorted it. We also did a day trade in this. Any questions here <clears throat> as I'm going along? Again, gaps happen every day. It's 
finding the gap and determining the direction for the gap and trying to figure out, um, you know, where the stock's going to go. Because if you can predict where it's going to go and take the trade before it goes there, you can make money. It's like if you said, if you said, oh, I know who's going to win the election. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, again, casino gambling things out there about that. And the odds have changed, I think, since last night. But the fact is that you, if, I mean, think of what you could do, decisions you could make with your life if you knew who was going to win the election. But of course, it's impossible. No one knows that. With technical analysis, or what I call advanced technical analysis, I'm looking at past price data and the gap to predict the future price data. And that's how I do it. Um, someone has a question here. Pedro, how do you choose the strike? Uh, I don't always do it at the money, but a lot of times I do. Um, I might do it away from the strike. I don't have the trade in here, but we also did the NVIDIA 100 puts. They worked too. And that was more than 10, 110, like it was over 110 when I called the 100 puts. So it was like, I wanna, I wanna say it was, might've been like $12 away from 100 and I called the 100 puts and that was actually um, a huge trade too. So sometimes I will call it close to the strike, whatever I can get or pull up like I did with this NVIDIA. Um, or I'll call it away where it's gonna, that's the target basically. Then the $100 number is the target or as close as you can get it there. Okay. That was a good question. Anyways, think about it, think intellectually. You know, the idea of shorting is something that if you specialize in, you could become, you know, really good at it and create a niche for yourself. And that's exactly what I've done. So I've been trading now for 16 years. It's hard to believe. Again, we were just talking about 9-11, which was 23 years ago. I mean, the time goes by like a blink of an eye. I think there's so many traders and people that are older than me that have been trading for so long. And they, they always have this intent to want to do well, but they want everything now, today, yesterday, this week, tomorrow. If you would take your time and learn something and invest in it and spend the money to do a class like mine or take your time and try to figure it out or even start with a small account. Fast forward six months from now, 12 months from now, you will be where you wanna be because time is flying. If you never get on the right path and never learn the right, correct strategy to trade and never get the support that you need in a good system, you will never make any money. So often people wanna sign up for really cheap classes. They lose more money trading, taking bad trades, following a system that doesn't work than they ever do paying for a class like mine which is not cheap. So it's half a dozen one and the other where I think people just miss, you know, the, the, the point, which is to make money sustained, not just taking one fly by night trade, like all the Reddit traders were taking, you know, when there was all these, like, and again, people are still in Reddit chat runs now sharing ideas, but you know, based on what you don't know, these people are strangers. You, I have a set thing I do every day. And if you do my class, you're going to get to know me. And if you're in the trading room every day with me, you are going to get to know me. I just told you a story about myself at the beginning of the lecture. Uh, Pedro has a story. Um, Pedro, I did just answer that. Did you hear me? I said, sometimes I'm doing it right where the stock is trading and sometimes I'm doing it far away and then it's the target. I don't know if you heard what I said. Okay, getting back to this. If you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to trade with this side of power and you need to know how to find it. Knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader. You can win big trading on the side of power. Again, we shorted the market today. This was a nice move to the downside. This was a nice trade. You could have got in and got out. Boom. So again, momentum, momentum. So I'm momentum trading. So I'm not only am I trading the gap, again, focusing on the shorts, I want a big move. Okay, like I told you, we did the market last week. This was a big move on Tuesday. This was a big move on Friday. This was a big move today. Actually, we have two more days left in the week. 
So a lot of people want to look at the Fed and fundamentals and economic reports. And we have a bunch of reports Thursday and Friday. Market could rally, market could fall more. I don't know what the reports say. It doesn't matter. I am not going through those reports and making decisions based on fundamentals. You shouldn't either, because if you're doing that, you're going to get chopped up. First of all, the data a lot of times has been revised. And then you have the Fed that's relying on data that keeps getting revised. I mean, it's just, it's really ridiculous what's happening this year in 2024, in my opinion. And everyone thinks the Fed is going to lower rates next week a lot. I don't think they're going to lower them a lot. I think it's going to be a quarter or a half at the most, which is already built into the market. So, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see how the market reacts not only the next week with the Fed, but everything that he says. And then, of course, going into the election, like I said earlier, it's going to be a very interesting time to trade. It's going to be a very uh, exciting time to trade. Why? Because there's going to be a lot of opportunities. Like we had opportunities today that I didn't anticipate worked out. We made money. We had opportunities last week and a short week during a holiday week, which I didn't anticipate either. And it worked out. We made money. Things happen all the time. You got to be there. You got to be present. You got to be there to get the trades, okay, to make the money. And then again, follow what's going on. So anyways, a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market. Stocks creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for the institutional money, you're really reading the side of power. You're reading the side of power in a stock or the market. Again, we do the market ATS. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. And this is the whole point of getting something down, learning it, putting your risk on, thinking about your risk, getting out when you're up. And again, the focus. So I'm a specialist on gaps and particularly on shorting and I'm reading institutional money. And like I said, I've been doing this since 2008, which is crazy. Every trader on every level must learn this skill set. It can be acquired through education, and that's the point of learning it, getting really good, becoming an expert, and focusing just on one thing. So last week I had the trading room closed, even though we did options. Uh, this week we did nothing on Monday. Tuesday we went long Oracle. Today we shorted BA. It worked. I'm going to go over one week of trades in the room the last week before the holiday here, just to show you an entire week. My average risk was $3,000 a trade. These are day trades on margin. And again, we're going to go over these trades. BA was a winner on the Monday. Tuesday, the cues I'm going to show you the trade was actually a winner, but I screwed it up and I got out break even. Two trades in Amazon were winners. Then we did Foot Locker, which was another short. Nothing on Thursday. And then Dell, we took one stop and a second trade, which was big on the 30th. And that was going into the Labor Day weekend. So let's go over one week here in the room. And any questions? Talking, talking, talking here before I keep going. Any questions from anyone? Okay. Um, okay, very good. Next, BA. So I just got done telling you we did BA today, but we actually did BA before, uh, before the holiday here on the... 26. So we shorten it again, 173, got out at 172.50. So this was a day trade on margin, made 11.50. Let's take a look at the BEA here. So I called this trade live in the room, BA closed here, gap down and fell. So this little tiny tail thing, we did it, we got in, got out, boom, we were done. BA continued here. And then I don't have the chart here for BA today. BA this morning was at one point all the way down at 156 and change. Again, beautiful sell off here we're seeing in the BA and we did puts in that too. Uh, Tuesday, we did the cues. This is a trade I screwed up. I shorted it at 473.30 and I got out break even, but I was up $2 plus in this, but I was in Amazon too at the same time, so I got distracted. I usually don't do more than one trade at a time, but I did on this particular day. Here was the 27th. Again, closed here, gap down, fell. And then I screwed this up. But some people did get out of that with profit. Then this is the one I was focusing on Amazon. It was a good trade. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. Shorted it at 174.10, got out at 173.25, was trying to get a dollar, boom. Made 25.50, that was a good trade. That did continue, did it again. 
did it again, made another 2,700, same day, did a second trade on the 27th in the Amazon. That was a gap down. And the Foot Locker, which has been selling off pretty much like every day, uh, we shorted this. This was an earnings trade, 828, 29.95, and got out of 28.65. Made $3,900. This was on here. So let's look at the gap. Stock close here, gap down, open, rallied, fell, boom, dropped, broke 28 actually. Again, I don't always get a lower the day exit. I definitely don't, but we get the fast trade. And we got that here. Look at this. It's ridiculous. And then we didn't do any trades. There weren't any good gaps. So ready to go to the 29th. And then Dell was hard. Dell, we did, took the stop, lost $3,000 in the first trade. This was the, it was 830, the Friday before the holiday closed here. Gapped up, we went long it, we got stopped, then I did it again, then I did the ad, then we got a late morning rally here, and then it ended up being a big trade, but it took forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and this was a long. There wasn't any shorts of that day that I liked, so we did the Dell. Um, I take profit in my exits, something I call exit signs that I teach in the class. So again, my all my entries, all of my exits, I teach in the class. And you'll learn that in the class. And if you come into the room, I actually say the entry and the stop in the room. And then I say the exit in the room too. So you can follow along and take it with me and get out with me in the room. But as far as looking at the chart and where I'm doing everything, all of that I go over in the class. So this was one week and this was an average week. Cause again, we had one day we didn't do any trains. Um, and so with an average risk of $3,000, 27,900, good solid week. Again, so far this week has been a good solid week. We've had two trades and two winners. Again, you don't have to trade all day to four o'clock. You're giving money back the more trades that you take and the more that you trade. Less is more, it's better for structure. And again, why do I focus on shorting? To get the panic, it's a niche. Most day traders do not know how to short. They're not good at it. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to do it. A lot of people probably decided to short the market today very late, then it was bouncing. You know, I mean, again, I'm very aggressive with what I do because I have it all pre-prepped and figured out before the market even opens. I know I like BA before the open. I know I like Foot Locker or whatever, you know, whatever it is that I happen to be doing. Uh, you're welcome, Pedro. Any other questions? Pedro's had his coffee this morning. He is awake and alert. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions here? I'll take a sip of water. Anyways, getting back to the strategy. How are you going to find which gap to trade? You go through the process and you rate it and you can do everything that rates 20 points or more. Uh, you don't have to just do one thing. You know, I'm trying to focus on one thing, but you can do everything that rates per the system, technically. Um, and again, you can use it for options. You could use it for day trades. It's whatever you decide or want to do. Pedro had extra coffee. How funny. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk more here about what is a gap. So again, a stock gap, so the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. It's very unusual and extremely rare that a stock would close at 45.02 at four o'clock and open the next day at 9.30 at 45.02. Yes, that can happen. I would call that a neutral gap, but it is very, very rare. The market gaps almost every single day. You cannot go long every bullish gap. You can't short every bullish gap. You can't go long every bearish gap and you can't short every bearish gap. If it was that easy to trade or make decisions of the direction and a gap, no one would ever lose money. And again, gap fills don't work consistently. Sometimes it, it goes in the direction of a gap fill, but it doesn't work consistently as a way to make money to trade. So I don't trade a gap as a fill. Um, someone else is asking a question. So these, uh, we talked today about puts, but I will do calls, but we talked today about Snow and NVIDIA, which were puts, and I just said we did the BA in the market as puts. Uh, we are also talking, to, here, let's go back. We talked about two different things today, and I do two different things. Same strategy. Let's go back to Foot Locker. 
I called on the newsletter a Foot Locker put. I did it and I got in and got out. Made money on the put. I also did this trade, which is a trade on margin. So I do my gaps two ways. Now, I don't do everything that I short as a day trade as a, as a put though. If it doesn't have enough volume or whatever the case may be, then I'm not, I'm not doing a put in it. Sometimes I do an option in something I'm not doing a day trade in. I called SPY puts today. I didn't short the SPY today as a day trade. We did BA, but you could have. So I am doing both. So we're talking about both and I do both. The day trades are called live in the room, which are trades on margin. The options is a newsletter, which going back here, this is what it looks like if it goes to your email, it gets emailed to you. You get it. This was sent right after the open. Boom. You buy the put. You get it. So we do both. Oh, where were we here? That was a good question. So my suggestion to you is look at how much money you have. Look at your experience. Are you familiar with options? Do you like to do options? If you prefer to do options, do options first using this strategy. If you are day trading now and you prefer to day trade and you like to do that, do the day trades first, then delve into the options. Same system, same strategy. I'm rating the gap either way. Go with what you know how to get into it. If you're like the mechanics of it, you're like, I don't know how to put an order out for a put, you know, all of that stuff. You know, you're learning the rating system. You're learning this, you know, the, 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 how to make the pick. You're going to learn from me how to make the pick. That's the important part. Otherwise, you're just taking trades in anything. So that you learn. Do what you're comfortable with as far as the execution until you get used to doing it. And then I would do both because I think there's benefits to doing both. Uh, we have some questions here. Uh, George said, thank you. You're welcome. Do I give exits as well as entries in your newsletter? Let's talk about both the room and the newsletter. If you come to the live room, it's a prerequisite for the live room to, to take my class. You will learn all the entries and exits in the class. And if you're in the room, I call them live. Those are trades where I, if I say we're shorting this here at 100 and the stops 105. And then I say get out or I'm getting out here at 99. You're following me live. Got to be there live in the room. If you are doing options only or doing options with the day trades, the op you do not have to be in the room. There is no prerequisite for the options newsletter. You could just sign up for the newsletter and get tomorrow's trade, get the next trade. Those go to your email inbox. Most trades are sent in the pre-market before the open. You cannot take options trades in the pre-market. You would take the trade into the open. I am giving you the information that I showed you in here, the type, the ticker symbol, and then the strike, the, the trade, basically the strike and expiration date and whether it's a call or a put. I have targets in the letter. You are deciding where you were getting out. I am not sending out a letter that says exit here. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But do I always get the best exit? No, I just showed you the NVIDIA trade in the 110 puts that I did the trade and got out of and the stock went further. So you will make that decision where you want to go. I have targets in the letter. You can watch targets or you can just set them for profit targets. Say you're at work and you don't have time. You buy the put, put a limit order, sell order, just stick it out in there to fill you. If you pay a dollar for something, put it to sell a limit order at two. If you're busy and you can't see it and it hits, you'll make 100% if it fills you by four. If not, you're in the trade to the next day. And then put a limit order out the next day. And as the week goes on, if you're not getting the movement in the trade, you can put it down to a buck fifty or whatever the case may be. And you're looking at the stock chart uh, hopefully every night or in the morning when you're looking at your trades, if you're still in them, you have to at least look at what you're doing if you're, if you're not paying attention during the day. But I do not send out exact exits. You are deciding your own exit. You are managing your own account and your own trades. You also have to choose your risk based on the size of your account. And it's an active letter. So if you have, and I'm just making up an amount here, if you have $10,000 cash and you say, okay, I can trade options. I have it set up as a cash account and you want to do it. I wouldn't do, you know, 
10 trades for $1,000 risk and risk your whole account, even if I call 10 trades one, on one day. So I might call 10 trades in one week. So you have to space it out. Um, and again, if you want to ask me what I think about the risk or something, you can, but your risk has to be close or equal to it in every trade. Because if you risk $1,000 in NVIDIA and it goes on to work and then you do another trade that doesn't, then you could be upside down if you risked 5,000 in a trade that failed and you made you know, 200% NVIDIA or 300% NVIDIA, you could be upside down with one winner and lo one loser, which would be basically be a 50% win ratio and you shouldn't be upside down, even with one with a huge win ratio. Uh, CRM was a call that we did and it didn't work and we lost in that. So it could have worked, but it, it was very soon after I did it, I was like, oh crap, and it just didn't work. If we have time at the end, I'll bring that up. But, um, and, cause, and I will do calls. I will do calls. I told you, we, we, did, we did Oracle. I got in and out of Oracle calls yesterday, bing, bam, boom. I didn't want to hold it. I said that in the room and the trade was up and it ran up and boom, I was out. Uh, whether you want to hold them longer and longer and longer is up to you. But again, going back to this market time, the volatility, everything that's happening right now with the election. If you're up on a trade, I think 50% is good. I mean, obviously when I'm making more in these trades, there's nothing for me to do. I mean, the trains just go. NVIDIA, there was nothing to manage. I caught the train. It was aggressive. We were in early. It fell off a planet. Woo! You're out. You get out. It's done. Boop. And there's nothing to think about. You don't have to be that exact. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Always trying to get the perfect exit. You're going to give money back doing that. You're going to lose doing that. You're going to be up on a train, um, and then you're going to lose in it which is crazy, you know, just trying to trying to get out the low or get out the high and along. Uh, let me see what else. Um, okay. All right. Getting back to, again, how do you find gaps? You can find gaps a million places. It's finding the ones that I would call a golden gap or something that rates 20 points or more. So there's no shortage of places to find gaps. You can buy a scanner if you want. You can just, like I said, you can even watch TV, have Bloomberg on the morning, CNBC has the tickers across the board. There's lots of gaps that are out there. It's finding the ones that are going to work, the ones that are the good ones. You know, that's the, that's again what you're going to learn from me. Um, so again, you will learn in the class to find the gap rate and use a checklist. Again, gaps have to be qualified. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of a stock. Gaps are like a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook, and yet they hold a lot of significance. And that's why you, you, you know, you're getting all this information, and you're t pulling it all together to make the decision. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because you're a definitive and demonstrative change in show price and what is called an event. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or, in fact, change the trend. If you follow the gap, you will be following the power of money. So there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, and it's money. And it's not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money, like I was saying. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there is a lot of in the market. And again, like I was saying, you want to trade with those people because they're the ones that are moving stocks. They're the ones that are moving the market. You know, you can't. Even a whole huge, massive trading room wouldn't be able to. The amazing thing is that as negative and traders and analysts talk about the power of money people, they're the reason that one individual can be successful in the market. So like I said, I use this checklist. It, it's very structured. That's what you come and learn from me. It shows you where the power of money is. It helps you make the pick of what stock to do in the day. And it helps you focus on the right information. You pre-planned out before the open what you want to do, whether it's one trade or two. And again, that's where you get the focus. Whether you do it as an option or a day trader, both is up to you. It's the idea of getting the momentum, getting the move. If the stock's going to fall $10, it's up to you if you have the money to take it as a margin trade or if you want to buy a put. Okay, and most of the prices of our puts are relatively, uh, you know, normal price, I'd say, between one and four. Occasionally, we get an expensive one. Uh, beginning of the year, we had NVIDIA's, which were very expensive. Then, of course, the stock split. I mean, I'm just trying to think the last thing that we even had that was even close to what the video used to cost. I mean, $6 would be high, you know, for a put, you know, if we bought one, which you could see right now with the way things are. 
but the most valuable information for people to trade can be found in rating price action and gaps. Understanding chart rating of gaps and how important the patterns of price are in the market will assist you in being profitable. Rating power money when it sets up helps you get conviction to trade. If again, if you knew something was going to happen before you did it, you'd have a lot of conviction. That's where you're analyzing and getting all, doing all the pre-work. Seeing when and where the money sets up and goes, you know, is like finding a gold mine and seeing gaps clearly in how they are creating trends, changing trends and making momentum is a powerful way to trade. You can use the information to enter trades yourself so that you can get paid along with the power money move. So it's really easy to press the button and take risk once you know what to do. If you don't, you're second guessing yourself all the time. You're 50, 50, you don't know, you turn the TV on, you worry, you wonder. A lot of traders are in that mentality because they really don't have conviction in what to do. They really don't know whether they should go long or, 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 or not. Um, I don't know where the market's at right now, but if it has a big bounce today, then people are gonna go long. And then if it sells off, people are gonna be pissed Thursday or Friday on data. So again, it's if the volatility is gonna con continue and you have to have conviction. And when I say conviction, I mean 100% conviction that it is worth your hard earned money to actually take the trade. That you say, I can make this much and therefore it's crazy for me not to do the trade. That's really kind of how you have to look at every trade. And that's, you're not gonna feel that way about every trade. So that's why you don't do a million trades. Again, I just showed you the week results from, from the week in the room. It's one or two a day, that's it. Again, there's no reason to do a million things, okay? And I started trading because I wanted to work from home and it and you know, and, and obviously it's something you can do from home. It's something you can do from anywhere in the world. And, and a lot of people like to trade the US stock market because it does move and because it has volume. So if you come to learn my strategy, you will learn the how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy and system that is profitable. Gold and gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they focus on large momentum to trade. What stocks should you trade? Stocks at gap and rate, 20 points or more per the golden gap 26 point rating system. Again, this is what you're gonna learn in the class. Train the gap in the direction of the gap. That's what you're doing. And when do you trade them? Early in the morning on the open when they set up and trigger. So we're, we're trading quick, fast. We were in and out of BA fast today. We did not get out at the lows. I got out super early. I wanted to make money and be done. And again, we trade between 9.30 and 10. That's when we have the room open. You must have a structure in place in order to make any money at all consistently. It is about the consistency that many traders lack in their system. And again, it's, it's a checklist. It's a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, big move on the day, early confirmation of the bias of the move between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through on a good risk to reward target potential. So again, you will trade only golden gaps if you come with me set your goals how much money you want to risk how much money you want to get out one to one is a good goal <laughs> if you're risking 500 you're learning to make 500 and then again you create a money management plan for yourself to achieve your goal of becoming a professional trader and working for yourself and really it's just a wonderful lifestyle actually if you can learn how to do it and i i do my best to try to help people learn i've been teaching people for quite a long time trading for a long time i've had the business now going on 13 years so 12 years going on 13 it's, it's hard to believe but you know if you are all over the place jumping from thing to thing to thing never getting good at anything it's going to be very difficult for you to make money and you're probably losing so you want to think about it like a business and again think about what you're risking every train you should understand why you're doing it and if you don't don't do it you know don't do it and earning season starts in october that is a very busy time to trade too so again, that's before the election, which is gonna be wild as well. Uh, and again, I try to help people, I mentor them. If you have questions, you can always call or email me after the class. And if you have questions today about the class, you can call or email me too. But the system I use to find the right gap each day is called the Golden Gap 26 point checklist. And if you decide to come and learn from me, you will empower yourself to learn how to do it. You learn the entries and exits in the class. You learn the targets, you learn support, you learn resistance and you learn the 26 points. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full course on how to strategically find, pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. I am doing a live class. I've never done a live class before. This is a one-time event. It's actually next week. I cannot believe it, but it is a, a week away. It is September 20th, which is Friday, 21st, which is Saturday, and a half day, which is Sunday. I still have spots open for this. 
the deadline is tomorrow. I know I'm doing the webinar today. I can give you till Friday if you're here. I know that's quick, but this is the next class and, it, and you would have to come to New York. Uh, so it's really exciting. It's gonna be in a wonderful, wonderful place. And uh, people are coming, you will get to meet me, you will get to meet other trainers, and you will get a full on uh, experience of learning everything I know and me teaching you in a huge 68 inch screen with charts. So uh, it's something that I've been planning now for months and I had this lecture today. So if it's something you live in the tri-state area, or even if you don't, you can still get uh, plane and hotel reservations and come to New York and plan it and be here in a week. So um, I am also offering the trading room free through the end of 2025, the options newsletter free through the end of 2025, and the market report free through the end of 2025 with the class in New York, uh, which is again, two and a half days, live in person, and the cost of the class is $12,999. If you have questions, you can email me. If you want to sign up, you can call me as well. And, um, and then you would get the information about where the class location is after you sign up. People are coming. I have a few spots left, and it's something that you're serious about. You can email me, and I will send you the forms. It's going to be a great weekend. It's actually the first weekend of fall. It's going to be beautiful in New York. It's beautiful today. Any questions? And I made it on time. Any other questions about gaps or the class or the market or trading or anything from anyone here while we have a few minutes yet? How's everyone doing today? So I'm gonna put my email in the chat. If you're interested, I don't know if that went to the whole chat or just to the moderators. Here, let me see. I got you. I'll put it in. Okay. You gotta go all. Melissa. Stocks. And you can also go to my YouTube. My YouTube, which is the Stock Swish on YouTube. I have videos i have trading room videos you can hear the live room from yesterday i have posted i have reviews i have previous webinars and i have a lot of actually nature videos of central park because i live along central park so you can watch all my nature videos of birds and animals and things <laughs> i love those <laughs> all right george says good prezzo melissa thanks oh thank you <laughs> Well, we do have a little bit more time. I'm waiting to see if our um, 10 o'clock presenter is going to make it 